Hello everyone and welcome to our next FODMAP chat session. Today we are going to be talking about the gut microbiome and how to keep your gut healthy while you are on the low FODMAP diet. My name's Alana Scott, I'm the founder of A Little Bit Yummy and joining me today is Chloe Sweeney. Um, she is an incredible dietitian from the Monash FODMAP team and she's going to tell us all about our gut. Hello Chloe. Hi Alana, thanks for having me again. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this is a, obviously a massive topic and we could talk four days about it. So <laughs> I've got sort of five key questions that I know come up all the time in the format Facebook groups and we get them in our emails a lot. And so I was wondering if we should jump straight in. That's good. Okay, cool. My first question for you is what is the gut microbiome? Yeah, so it's a big topic. It's quite confusing. Um, so I guess to start off, the microbiome is is all of the bacteria that we can find within our gastrointestinal tract. So you might often hear it as just gut bacteria, gut microbiota, but essentially it's the bacteria that you can find within our gastrointestinal system. So that's coming all the way from the mouth, all the way through stomach, intestines, all the way to the very end of the tract. So um, there's bacteria all the way along. Um, and that's what you'll hear is the gut microbes or gut microbiota. So um, there's trillions of them living within our, our gastrointestinal tract, but most of them are actually focused in our large intestine. So that's where a lot of the bacteria live. Um, and we want to focus on having a lot, you know, of these bacteria. There's trillions and trillions. We want lots of bacteria, but also we want a big variety of this bacteria as well. So you might have heard of the word diversity or gut mm -hmm. microbiome diversity. So we want lots of bacteria and lots of different types of bacteria throughout our digestive tract. So um, a balance of all these bacteria is a really important thing when it comes to the gut microbiome. And they have a huge impact on our health, right? From everything from oh. helping us absorb nutrients to producing um, different chemical substances that our body needs to uh, use to sort of run effectively as well as impact our immune system. So like, oh, it's huge. That's huge. Huge. Yeah, they're not just idle. They're not just jobless sitting there. We've got all these bacteria working on our vitamin production, our immune system, digestion. There's even links now between our mental health, you know, that gut brain right. link linked to that microbiome. So they're, they have a huge impact. It's like another organ in our body, really. <laughs> It is. So we do not want to neglect that organ. We want to help keep it nourished and help keep it healthy. So let's talk about, you know, why it is important and what impact does the low format diet have on our gut microbiome? Yeah, sure. So our microbiome is impacted by our diet and lifestyle. So obviously, if we're doing a dietary change like the low FODMAP diet, it will have an impact on our bacteria. So essentially, our gut bacteria live off fermentable carbohydrates. That's their favorite thing. Um, and if that word tweaked a bit of a, an idea, FODMAPs are the fermentable carbohydrates. So if we're mm. on the low FODMAP elimination diet, it can have an impact on that energy source for those bacteria and what they can digest. So um, it's really important when we're going through that elimination phase of the low FODMAP diet that we're doing it in a supported way to make sure we're still providing these nutrients to the bacteria to do all this great work in our body, whilst also trying to avoid those, you know, FODMAP, you know, IBS symptoms as well. So it's just a balance between having enough food for the bacteria, but also helping us at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you're listening to this, you've probably just figured out like, hey, we've just reduced a whole other food that we were feeding our healthy gut, mi gut microbiome. <laughs> so if you are in the first phase of the low FODMAP diet, um, what can you do to support your gut health? So it's really important to find those foods that have a good amount of fiber, but also have these low FODMAP green serves. So obviously a lot of them will come up as red on the app, but you'll see, you know, with a smaller traffic light rating um, with those green low FODMAP serves. So looking for those foods with the fiber, but low FODMAP. So um, some good options. You might have heard of the word resistant starch. So it's, it's a type of fiber that is slightly less fermentable um, by the gut. So slightly less likely to cause those symptoms, but still a really great food for our um, microbiome. So um, things that have resi resistant starch are things like underripe bananas and you know, the green greener sort of side of bananas rather than the riper side. Um, oats, so getting that green serving of some rolled oats um, and things like potatoes and other sort of root vegetables, getting, making sure we're having the green servings of these, um, they're also containing this resistant starch. And Quick another one on is, that. yeah, yeah, go for it. It's potato that has been cooked and cooled 
right? So you're looking for dishes like potato salad or potato that's gone in the fridge overnight and then been reheated is going to be still a source of resistant starch. Yeah, if my so, science memory is correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so it really increases the resistant starch if you've cooled those potatoes and then had them again um, later on reheated. So yeah, just your leftovers, your cooled potato salad, that sort of stuff that really increases that resistant starch. So, um, and potatoes are so green, so low FODMAP. So it's a really great option <laughs> um, for that resistant starch um, sort of fiber option to keep your gut bacteria happy. Uh, another one I was going to mention was um, there's something called prebiotic fibers, which we can discuss a bit further um, on later in the talk, but um, these are often are fermentable, but we do have green servings of foods um, that can have this uh, prebiotic fiber. So beetroot, um, oats, nuts, canned lentils. Yes, they're often high FODMAP foods, but they have these smaller green servings when you look on the app that do contain these sort of fibers that we want as well. Yeah, I was going to say even um, foods like canned black beans or canned chickpeas, they have those low FODMAP serves that you can add back in to sort of boost that fibre intake. Exactly right. Awesome. Cool. That is super helpful. So obviously when we're on the first phase, we're focusing on the foods you've mentioned and the green rated serves of those high FODMAP foods. Um, I've got a couple more questions for you. One is not on the list that I present you, but I'm just going to throw it in now. <laughs> sure. Obviously, we've been talking about the first phase of the low format diet. Um, and then we've got the reintroduction phase. Why is the reintroduction phase important for your gut health? I think we should cover that now. <laughs> yeah, so this is a time where you can test whether other foods um, can be reintroduced into your diet. So you want to keep on that low FODMAP diet with, you know, those five options. But reintroduction, we want to have as many foods at the end of the FODMAP diet that we can be including in our diet. So reintroduction gives us that option um, to test these foods. You, it might be scary. You might get symptoms on some foods, but there might be foods that are full of these rich fibres that our bacteria like um, that you can reintroduce for that issue. So it's important to go through that phase to make sure we can find these foods to include in our diet in the end, to make sure we are providing enough food for our bacteria and trialing foods that we're not having a teeny tiny diet by the end of the low FODMAP sort of three phases. Absolutely. We don't want you to get stuck in this first phase where you're super restrictive. Ideally, we want to get you back to a point where you can enjoy as many different fruit, vegetables, whole yep. grains, nuts, pulses and legumes as possible. So like exactly. you're nourishing your body in all these different ways. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> okay. So the other question we get all of the times, particularly in the groups, um, lots of these questions are coming from people first starting the diet is where do prebiotics and probiotics fit with the low FODMAP diet? Sure. So as, as I sort of mentioned, prebiotic fibres are, um, you know, food for our bacteria, um, but are often found in high FODMAP foods. So um, they can still fit into the diet when you find these high FODMAP foods that have the low FODMAP serving. So you don't have to eliminate prebiotic fibres completely. You want to still include them in those green serves if they have them, because they are the food for your bacteria. Um, they bacteria thrive off these. So we don't want to completely remove it. Um, but when you can have those green serves, that's great. Um, with you gonna ask something sorry <laughs> no it was actually so we know like prebiotics in um all of our whole foods but we've got like trendy things happening at the moment like foods being marketed so for example yogurt being marketed high in prebiotic fiber um or you've got prebiotic supplements so like how do you handle those in the first phase yeah, um, our, our suggestion would be to probably avoid or eliminate them unless they've been certified. So we test some prebiotic fibres, um, but there's some that, we, you know, it depends what the origin of the prebiotic is. So during the FODMAP diet, it's probably best to eliminate them. And that's something you could try. You could have your own reintroduction once you've finished, you know, in that phase three sort of thing, once you've tried the main bits of reintroduction, you could try these probiotic sort of labelled foods as your own reintroduction in that long-term diet. So you don't have to leave them forever. There's something you can try, but it's important to probably try only a couple of things at once um, rather than trying to reintroduce all these FODMAP foods and these prebiotic fibres at the same time. So just take yeah. it slow. Don't feel like you have to try everything at once. Um, but yeah, they can cause symptoms. So it's important just to try it sort of in small increasing amount because um, it depends yeah. what the source is. So far, what I get from that is label reading is important in the first phase of the diet. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. If your rice crackers or yogurt is mentioning these prebiotic fibers, make sure you go in and check that it's not inulin or chicory root or um, FOS being added to them, which are going to be those like really high FODMAP ingredients first. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. And then, um, so we just talked about prebiotics, but the flip side of that is probiotics, which are normally advertised really heavily as sort of for fixing um, gut issues <laughs> or improving gut health. What about those in the different phases of the diet? Yeah, sure. So um, for those who aren't aware, probiotics, are, it's pretty much products that contain bacteria in it already. So similar to bacteria that you find in our gut, they've added those into certain foods. You often see them in um, cold foods or fermented foods because that's what, you know, the bacteria thrives the best. Um, a key thing with these is there's not a lot of strong evidence on their use technically in IBS at the moment. Um, but as we've mentioned before, everyone's gut health and journey with IBS is really different. So they might be beneficial for you. They might not work for me. Who, who sort of knows? Um, but a key thing is we don't want to try, as we sort of mentioned, try too many things at once. So our suggestion would be not worry too much about probiotics um, during the FODMAP diet. If it's in a low FODMAP food, it should be okay, right. but we would suggest yeah. not yeah, not doing too many things at once. So don't go taking a huge probiotic supplement while doing the FODMAP diet because if you do get symptoms or if you feel better, you don't know if it's the FODMAP that you're eliminating or whether it's the probiotic you're using. So yeah. um, maybe either before you try the FODMAP diet or once you're in that long-term phase of the diet, trying whether it's a fermented food or whether it's um, through a supplement, um, that is something you could trial to see if it works. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's not hard evidence that's going to work for everyone at this point in time. That is really good to know and probably quite reassuring for a lot of people as well. Like we really want you to focus on one strategy at a time and really work through those different phases of the diet and not get too distracted by other things so that you don't have to stay on it for too long. And I love your comment, like it's fine if it's in a food that is green rated in the app. You don't have to avoid your yogurt, which is normally a really yeah. good source of probiotics, but you know, you don't have to go out and buy um, the probiotic supplements at this exactly. stage until you're, like until we've, you're ready. Come yeah, on. we've tested okay. kefir, we've tested sauerkraut, kimchi, that sort of stuff, and there's green servings of those. So, you know, they're not going to be a FODMAP issue sort of thing. So there's no no harm in including them, but don't go out thinking probiotics is going to fix you while you're also doing the FODMAP diet because that's going to get confusing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for this chat about the gut microbiome. Now, we know some of you are listening into this and probably like, I still have a question, <laughs> which is completely okay. Um, if you leave us a comment below the video, either in the comment section, um, that would be fantastic. We'll be monitoring those comments and we'll try and pop in and out and respond to them after the video so that you can get some information um, as needed. Otherwise, we hope you enjoy this FODMAP chat. Also, if you have topics you want us to cover in future FODMAP chats, make sure you let us know in the comments because we'd love to know what would be useful to you. Now, for those of you listening in, this is another way you can support Monash University. They are the founders of the FODMAP diet and they are also doing all our food testings and expanding our low FODMAP options. So um, they're a critical part of the low FODMAP community. If you want to support them further, then please make sure you go to monashfodmap.com and have a look at their website. They've got heaps of extra information or go and download the Monash University of FODMAP Diet app. The money you pay towards purchasing the app goes straight back into FODMAP research, and it's kind of like your own little FODMAP Bible in your pocket. I mean, it's got all the lists of foods and heaps of help guides, so make sure you go and grab that. And um, we've also got lots of other low FODMAP resources on a littlebityummy.com, so you might want to check those out as well. Okay, Chloe, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait for our next format chat session sometime soon. So thank Thanks you. Thanks again, Alana. Thank you. See ya. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.